ChatGPT's got some awesome updates that are perfect for personalizing it for your research. Let's check it out. So the first thing I want to go to is this little bit up here, which is my lovely face. Mmm, lovely face. And then uh, click up here and go to Customize ChatGPT. Now, this has been around for a while, but they've just added some extra things, which means you can personalize it for your research. So let's check it out. So here, Customize ChatGPT says, introduce yourself to get better, more personalized responses. Now, one thing you've got to know about this is that it may be applied, you can choose to apply it, to all of your future conversations. So we want to keep this kind of broad, but if you're using it for a specific task, i.e. academia and research, you can make sure that it gives you awesome responses. Well, better responses than it would without this bit. So what can I call you? Call me Dr. Andy. Oh, I like that. Oh, I got that feeling again, just like after I got my PhD and my mum said, hello, Dr. Stapleton. Oh, that felt good. All right, what do you do? I am a, let's say I'm a PhD student. I'm not anymore, I've graduated, but you get the idea. And what traits should ChatGPT have? Now, if you're not sure what it should have, check out this stuff down here. Do you want it to be chatty, witty, opinionated? All of these things, just keep clicking them if you want some inspiration, this little refresh button down here. Um, I actually want it to be academic. Oh, why is my computer so slow? Okay, academic. Um, okay, what traits? Um, I want uh, chat GPT to be uh, academic. Okay, and then let's see if it will give me uh, any more things. I want it to be straight shooting. Um, and I want it, uh, I want, tell it's like it is. I don't want to be sugar-coated. Okay, yeah, that's a little bit rough. Oh no, ChatGP, don't be mean. The whole world, the whole the PhD and academic universe is being mean to me. I don't need you being mean to me as well. All right, I want ChatGP to be academic um, and make responses suitable for an academic environment. Oh, God, what a bloody nightmare with my spelling. Okay, luckily there's uh, uh, autocorrect. Okay, there we are. So that's the first thing is we can go in and we can put what, what traits ChatGPT should have and be unsure. Just, uh, you know, click that info button, the cheeky info button, and it will give you what you want. Okay, next thing to know is anything else ChatGPT should know about you. Let's go on the info button. If you like hiking, vegetarian, trying to learn French, well, I'm learning Persian at the moment, but I don't want it to speak to me in Persian because I'm not very good at reading it. But uh, let's say I need it to know that uh, I am a PhD student um, and I am... Uh, working on OPV devices. Um, oh, God. Oh, really? It's going to be one of those days, isn't it? It's going to be one of those days. Devices. Okay, there we are. So you can fill it out with everything that it needs to know about you. Now, underneath here is the advanced stuff. If you want it to do web search, dal -E, which is create images. Well, I'm not really interested in images, so I'll click off that. Code. Well, if you're coding for your PhD, yeah, you can include that. Or you can say Canvas. I love Canvas for collaborative writing with ChatGPT, so it's going to stay in there. Um, I'll leave dal -E as well, because I'm a little bit scared about using that. But enable for new chats. You can turn it on and off. So if you you find that you make this sort of like change and then it's not really giving you what you want you can just turn it off here and then so click save and then get on with it as usual but i'm going to click here enable for new chats i'm going to click save and it's as easy as that chat gpt now knows everything about you which is kind of scary now that i've said it out loud but make sure that you give it enough so it just knows how to interact with you that's the real thing that uh, this customized chat gpt can do all right there's a second thing which i think is just as awesome and probably even better. Let's check it out. Okay, so the second thing you need to know is about projects. Projects is down here. It's this new little bit here. Oh, I like that. Now, projects has appeared in other AI tools like Claude, and this is no different. And I love the way they've set it up. So in here, I click on a new project, bonk, and I can give it a project name. So let's just say it's um, a new paper. 
Okay, and then I'll create a project. It will open up this dialog here and it's a little bit different to normal chat because you can chat with this project. It also gives you, you know, whether or not you want to write code or just uh, collaborate on writing with Canvas. It can't search the web. So where does it get its information? Well, you can give it files. So if you're working on a new paper and you've got a load of references that you want it to use to, you know, create an introduction or you want to give it some data that you want to talk about. And I know you're going to say to me, Andy, not going to give ChatGPT all my data. Well, some institutions have a sandbox in which they can work where this would also be good enough to keep their data secret and all oh, safe in its little box. But now we need to go to project files. If you feel comfortable uploading it, just upload it. Um, and then you could put in, for example, some papers and then that uploads and then it uses that as its knowledge base to uh, work with. So it will add the files slowly and you'll see them appear here. But this is another thing that is important and that's instructions. So the one thing I love about projects is that you can give individual specific instructions to ChatGPT so that it can work with you and not just sort of guess what you want to know or what you're working on or how it should respond. So here we go. In here we can say, okay, I'm writing, uh, okay, I won't let you see me type it out because that's boring, but we'll say um, I'm working on a new peer-reviewed paper and here are the references um, attached as files. Help me sort of like generate um, an introduction, an abstract from this stuff. And that is how you can work with it. And then you just, there we are. That's me typing all of that really fast. Ooh, oh God, something happened. Okay, there we are. Save. Um, and then, bonk. Um, you can see here that you can chat with this project. It will reference the project files and given the instructions, it will limit its responses to something that's actually very useful. I like that. So I've also got this one, PhD thesis. This is one way I think can be really useful if you're writing up a thesis or a peer reviewed paper is you can give it a sample thesis. You can say, these are sort of like a few theses from my field, and then you can then use them to structure your thesis. So for example, here, um, I've got this instruction that said, this is to help me write my PhD thesis by providing examples of theses in my field to help me write and structure my work. So this is where all the chats will appear down here and we can click on that and we can see that I've asked it up here, provide a structure of the abstract of a PhD thesis based on the one in the project files. And uh, it's told me that if I'm writing an abstract for my thesis, it should include an introduction to the research topic and uh, research objectives, methodology, all of the, all the, blah, 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 why can't I speak today? La, 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 uh, all the way down to conclusion conclusion with a uh, brief statement summarizing overall achievements. So those are the stepping stones that I would need to sort of like jump through. Boink, 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 boink. Thesis or abstract at the end. Um, and that's it. So there we are. That's how we can use projects. Also, if you're working on different papers, if you're working on different um, ideas, if you've got sort of like a segmented project, you can give them each individual project folders. Love it. Much easier to work with. Mm, check out this next one as well. The last update that makes ChatGPT awesome, in my opinion, is this one up here. We'll go up here to my lovely little shiny headed face as well. <laughs> Bing, and then we'll go to tasks. Tasks is in beta mode at the moment, and it's beta because it doesn't really work very well sometimes, and we'll talk about why in a minute. But here, you can schedule different tasks. So here I've got send AI news, summarize AI news, and here, send OPV device updates. Now, I uh, can't actually create a new scheduled task from this thing, that's a really annoying. I was looking around and being like, where do I find the button? It doesn't exist on this page, how annoying. So I've got to go to new um, chat up here, and then I've got to go here to this thing here, which is chat uh, GPT with schedules task, and then ask chat GPT to follow up later. Now here's the trick to working with this, is that I have sort of like got frustrated. Chat GPT, why won't you do what I want? You're meant to be clever, but you have to make sure that you have to tell it how often and at what time you want it to do something with the AM and PM, otherwise it does not work. So for example, I want to say every day at 10.00, and then, oh, every day I, <laughs> at, my like Ali G moment, at, uh, all right, hear me now. <laughs> Okay. 
<laughs> every day at 10. Right, I put that before in a prompt before and it did almost nothing. Well, I said it did almost nothing. It gave me a response, but it didn't schedule it. So now I want to say at 10 a.m., um, uh, remind me to, I don't know, uh, uh, brush my teeth. Okay, and then we cross our fingers because it's beta and we just push go. I don't like this. Okay, creating task, got it. Okay, so that sort of like is the basic structure for creating a task. You have to say when and how often. And if we go in here, we can edit the task. Brush teeth, tell me to brush my teeth every day at 10 a.m. That's probably a little bit too late, isn't it? bit late. Okay, let's change that. We can then change the time and say, well, I'm up at like 6.30, I have breakfast, and then I want, okay, so it's 7. Let's say it's 7 a.m. There we are. Easy peasy. It's saved to a new time, um, and you can do that. And so what happens at this time, it will give you a little notification either here in your um, on your desktop or even on your phone, and it will send you an email as well. If you need an email uh, to remind you to brush your teeth, hmm. Maybe you're struggling in more ways than ChatGPT can help you. Anyway, um, here we go. We can go up to look at other tasks I've got set up here. So um, let's go to tasks, which is in beta mode, and summarize AI news. And what will happen is you'll end up with a running list. Oh no, that one hasn't done yet. That's a new one. Let's go to another one. Send AI news. Oh no, that's the very top one. I just clicked again. Um, summarize AI news. No, that's not the one. <laughs> Oh, why did I? Okay, send it. Okay, no, that's not right either. Um, essentially, what should happen <laughs> is that okay, we'll go over here. Is that there should be like a a a um, running uh sort of like list of what it's told me it has found. And for some reason, okay, AI news request. Yeah, great. Okay, that one, that one. Okay, so for example, here I didn't provide the AM and it just did it right away. But also in Okay, there, that one, okay, I don't know what's happened to it. It it should have, underneath all of the tasks, it should have its response. Now, I got a response this morning at 10 past 10, but it's not here, and I don't know where it's gone. Maybe if I refresh it, I don't know. But uh, this is why it's beta, it's all over the place. Um, but I have been, uh, yeah, trialing this, and it's, uh, you know, it's hit or miss at the moment. What's happened now? It's just crashed. <laughs> <gasps> oh, I love the beta. I love the beta. I love the beta. Okay, daily toothbrush reminder, AI summary request. Okay, so this is what I got this morning. I don't know why it's not saved in the AI news, but this is what we end up with um, at after each um, sort of run is that, uh, okay, I got it. I'll send that every morning and I wanted um, an AI summary of the late, uh, sorry, uh, latest news of the A. Hang on, we'll try that again. Come on, Stapes. Um, send me a summary of the latest AI news for education and PhD and research. Obviously, that's very useful for my uh, videos. And then we go in here. Here is a summary of the latest AI news relevant to blah, blah, blah. Funding and support for AI research, AI integration into education. So it's got all of these all linked out. And importantly, when I was creating the task, I clicked on this one, search the web. I think that's useful. I did it. If we wanted to search the web, make sure it's clicked in there. Um, and yeah, that's it. So AI news, where were we? Where even were we? were we? Here it is. It tells you the sources down the bottom. But I think with a little bit of polishing, this will be a pretty good tool in the future. Let me know how you would use it. If you like this video, check out this one where I talk about echo writing. What is it? Well, go check out that video. You'll love it.